Hey everybody, this is Patty the Tinkerer's wife, and this is like take seven. <laughs> you know, some videos are like this, and this one I had planned out a little better than most of my other ones. I mean, I got a drink. This is just water. Yeah, I've been talking myself hoarse, and nobody's been here to listen. Anyway, today we're going to talk about... Um, a technique that you can use to produce a base map for your garden and some overlays that you can change out um, that will give you a record um, when you change things around be it every year be it from summer to or to spring summer to fall those kinds of things you do these overlays using tracing papers it's really a great thing it isn't that hard to do um, you can actually have fun doing it if you like to color, if you like to draw, it's a lot of fun. Maybe you have an artistic child at home and this would be a good opportunity for them to get their fingers in helping plan the garden. Um, they might come up with some really great ideas design-wise for you, you might be surprised. Also helps them to take ownership of the garden. Um, that's one of the things with getting kids involved with gardens is to help them to take ownership of it so they know that it is their garden too because it is the family garden. So anyway, um, if I didn't welcome people before, I want to welcome you now. I've said this like, a, feels like a thousand times, time number seven. Thank you to everybody who's brand new here. Um, I'm up over 800 subscribers and I'm just amazed that I have that many this quickly. Uh, but this community, which is the homesteading community basically, um, has been so supportive and you all who follow the homesteaders um, have very similar uh, hearts and and are like-minded in helping and supporting others and we all appreciate it I appreciate it so anyway um, if you haven't subscribed I urge you to subscribe and to ring that notification bell so you can get the best of what's coming up next <laughs> and I produce videos basically every Tuesday um, I'm not yet editing using the, the video editor stuff, so that's in my goals for 2020. Uh, so this isn't edited, this is an unedited raw video. So let's get into this before it gets too late. Oh, one more thing. I have a post office box now. It's actually a mailing address, a UPS store, and I have email. And you can find both of those in the About section on my channel page. So go to my page, go to the channel page, go to the about section, click on that and you'll see it down towards the bottom of the description of my channel. Uh, you also learn who I am a bit, what's been going on, and uh, I hope that you and you'll stick around and watch as I go through this wonderful journey because I have some pretty interesting things going on and I think that it will be a benefit to a lot of people actually. Um, and I don't say that with any any boasting, trust me. <laughs> I'm nobody special. I just share everything that happens. <laughs> and it does tend to let people know they're not alone. That's part of the reason I'm here. You're not alone. <laughs> okay, that just got goofy. Anyway, <laughs> let's turn this around. I'm spending way too much time on that. All right. Wow, I'm almost four minutes into this video. Okay, what I'm going to do today is show you how to go from this piece of graph paper to that. Which, to some of you, that might look like it's like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to do that? It isn't really that hard. And it doesn't have to look as, as um, even near as fancy as mine does. I'm just trying to show you some of the detail. Because, I mean, I, I've worked with plants a lot. And I, I'm artistic, you know, even right down to, that's chamomile, right? Look at those ferny leaves. You know, so anyway, um, beets, radishes, carrots, fennel, or probably dill. Um, that is love and a mist right there. The little pod, I love those pods. Um, that would be basil. These would be blueberries and sunflowers beans and peas, squash, you can see all the different things. So anyway, I will show you how to get there. And it's really not that hard. Um, anyhow, here we go. So first, we start out with the graph paper. 
and we draw out the basic layout of the garden. And you can see here, this is just the layout of the beds here. And then this is a pathway here that goes like this. These are the different pens and the pencil. I originally start out with pencil, and then I overlay that with, with a waterproof ink. If you're like me and you take your design out in the garden, you don't want it smearing in the rain. You need waterproof ink. This is Micron pen, and it is a 08 size. This is a Sharpie marker, brand new Sharpie marker. Um, I don't like Sharpie markers, and I, it's kind of a fussy thing I don't like about them. A couple things, anyway. A practical reason is their points do not stay pointy very long, and pretty soon this will be twice as wide and all smudgy. You don't want that, especially if you're going to be keeping this design for a while. The other thing is, is it will produce a haze on both sides, kind of this funky, I'm going to say, not really tobacco juice, but... A tea stain kind of a haze so your line just kind of spreads and I don't like that either you know there's no reason why you can't find a uh, you can't get a micron pen I mean what are they they're three I think regular price are about three or four bucks and you can get a coupon and get them at 40% off um, at a craft store this is the pen that everybody used for Zentangles um, and that kind of thing, so they're around. Uh, Faber-Castell makes a nice one, too. Um, yeah, but those two would be the ones I'd use. But anyway, as far as pencils, I don't use regular pencils. I use these mechanical pencils. This is a Papermate. Um, it's a number two sharp writer, and these come in a package, and I use these all the time, and I got so used to using... Uh, how easy it was to use mechanical pencils when I was going through landscape design. I'm going to show you a couple things over here. Rulers. Now these are all made by the same brand. Uh, the cool thing about them is they have this cork on the back, which doesn't slide on the paper. It sticks on the paper better, so when you're, you're doing your design, it's not going to go anywhere. And then um, the other thing is, is that there's a ledge that it provides so it lifts up the metal from the paper so if you're using a pen uh, these pens will if they're laid flat like this one would lay flat because it's got this edge will lay flat, 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 lay flat on the paper and the ink especially if it was a new pen might run underneath it migrate underneath the the metal um, I've seen that happen with wood um, rulers, uh, plastic rulers are notorious for it, um, but that's what you want. You want something that's got a little bit of a lift. You could even just use a piece of cardboard on the back of your ruler and just cut it so it's in just a little bit from the edge like this is. You don't have to buy one of these if you don't want to. These are not expensive and they last a lifetime. I've had these and I've used them a lot. Um, in my, I see them at the thrift store. <laughs> You'd be surprised how much I get at the thrift store. Um, this fancy fade out paper, I got this at the thrift store. This was actually somebody's paper from their class, and I got it, I think, for two bucks. This stuff is not cheap. It's, it's really wonderful, though. I'm going to make a lot of noise here for a minute. Um, I'm going to explain this to you. This paper comes in a couple different grid pattern grids. This is a 10, uh, 10 squares per inch. This is the blue that does not reproduce in a, on a copier. So if you drew something on here and you wanted a clean copy without the grid, you could get it. Um, so that's really kind of fun to do. If you're doing a design of a cabinet or um, maybe you wanted to do that for your garden design beds, I don't know, for these things, I, whatever. Anyway, there's a, a thousand reasons you might want to use it. Um, you can do it, use it for lettering, that'd be cool. You could do lettering and then copy it off and you've got it got the clean copy. Um, go to a copier store that's got a good laser or photocopier and that would work really great. Okay. Um, pencils. We've covered the pencils. This is a Marie's soft eraser. I get this at Jerry's Artorama. 
absolutely the best, hands down, the best eraser I have ever used. And it is not an expensive eraser. Since I am so close to a thousand people, I am putting together giveaways. I'm going to have giveaways, girls, boys, whoever's listening, share with your friends, let them know. I'm going to be doing giveaways. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it for three people or five people, um, but I will be doing a giveaway. Um, hopefully I'll be doing lives by then. And I don't know that I'm going to do the ask a question of people because, you know, I don't remember a lot about everybody's videos. I follow so many people. And for some people, I don't think that's necessarily a fair way to do it. I may do the, you know, choose a number between 5 and 35 or something like that. Or um, maybe I'll have a friend there who can, we can draw a number out of, draw something out of a hat. Something like that. Anyhow, um, so I'm going to be doing a giveaway. Enough about that. Uh, and I'm going to probably be adding the one of these into each one of the each one of the boxes. They're not very expensive. Um, I may see if Jerry's will pony up a this and and maybe something else uh, garden design related. That'd be fun. So I'm going to talk to them about it. Um, I've never reached out to them, and this is a whole new community for them to reach into. So that might be a good thing. Um, the other thing I love, and you saw all those colors, color crayons. Yes, color crayons. I love the smell of them, the feel of them, the bright colors. And these are just children's coloring crayons. They, there are professional ones. They're much more expensive. Uh, they will produce a beautiful result, but these are awesome. Another thing you can do, if you want to transfer your design onto, um, what do I want to say, mixed media paper, you can watercolor it. And I've seen... I've seen people do watercolor renditions of their garden. I mean, this would not be hard to do in a watercolor kind of a thing, but it would be, um, what do I want to say? Oh, I'm so bad. I can't think of the style of art. Impressionistic. You do like an impressionist version of your garden, but you'd know what it means. Now, one of the things I want to say while I'm thinking of it here is when you go to do this, um, you either want to make little notes, you know, if you can see it right there. There's my note of the leak, the cukes. You can either do that in pencil, that pencil will erase, or you can make a sidebar kind of a key um, that you can use and maybe just use the shapes of them. I don't know how you want to do that, but anyway, um, for this kind of a design, I would I would probably just make little notes here. You can tell what these are as long as they read to your eye. Maybe in a, on a notepad that goes with this, a, a note that goes with this, maybe for your annual garden design uh, folder, that you have a key written out as to the types of produce that you grew, the types of cucumbers or cabbage or lettuces, tomatoes, peppers, you know, you get the idea. What worked and what didn't, and I cannot say this enough, what did not work, <laughs> you will forget. So somebody I know, a designer that I know, um, she would take pictures, she's from England, she would take pictures of containers let me turn this around. She would take pictures of containers that she designed every year. And she would take pictures of the good ones and the bad ones, not the bad ones. This has cracked me up so much. She would write in bold letters, never do this again. <laughs> so I think that would be kind of funny. Maybe have the uh, envelope of your most disliked vegetables and write on them never grow this again and have that in a special section on a page these are just funny ideas and i like producing um, memory things of the garden that will guide me and lead me and also entertain <laughs> why not you know somebody else is going to receive this when i'm gone and i'd love to have them see that and say oh that was so grandma <laughs> 
So anyway, uh, that's where that's at. But anyhow, getting back to this, you can see we went through those, oh, they have this, oh, this is how it is. Those bright colored things there. Oops, I've really got this backwards. Sorry about that. I, this is raw video, so you just have to live with it. Oh, before I... There's a light back here. You really can't tell, but there is. That's just a lamp, one of those lamps. And if it was darker in here... I don't know if this will work. There, now you can see it better. You can see those lines show up much better. That's what you want to be able to do, is to see those lines. What am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have it right. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm backwards. I don't have these marked very well. They were just kind of together. So you can see how well Sharpie, the uh, Micron, and the pencil lines. You can see them all through here. But this Micron really is a really nice line for this. Um, anyway, these are the shapes. Again, remind you, these are the shapes. Just kind of... And just so you know, this is a guideline. Most of you who've gardened for a while know that you get your big ideas and you start planting and you go, well, that's not going to work. Or maybe something dies and you have to try something different. Um, you can make notes regarding that. Maybe on a, this was the spring planting plan, have another one for summer, you know, uh, when June hits and we have to do another, or maybe May you start doing, depending on where you are located. I'm in 8B, so we start planting things in February here um, if we're on top of it and then we start you know we keep planting and we'll we'll plant tomatoes and stuff maybe in April if we have the soil warmed up and they're protected um, so the warm weather crops we, we, we plant like May into June and then we start getting ready for fall in late July August um, and winter cropping uh, will come later, late September, October. So, and I could have a sheet for each one of those. And it, each one would look very different than this. But the beauty is, I don't have to look at that again. I have the blank ones. And I just put a new piece of tracing paper over it, and it's done. How about that? One more thing I want to show you here. Should you decide, let me close this. Oh, in this box... I'm going to bounce around here. This box is pretty cool. I use this on my lap in a chair a lot of times because it fits, or on the couch. Um, it fits so I can sit in comfort, and it folds down like that. And it carries. It's got a little handle back here. Um, we did not build this, but it wouldn't be hard to build. I just noticed my plastic is cracking. You could use a, a good sized picture frame and put plexiglass in here, maybe put a, um, some of that frosted um, oh, contact paper on the back, something that would be uh, translucent. You don't want transparent, you want translucent because that'll help to reflect the, the light better. It'll, it'll disperse the light better. But you could build that yourself. And I may do a video on that a little bit more show you and if you need pictures I can I can probably put up some pictures on my Instagram I think that's what I'll do I'll put pictures of this up on my Instagram so you can see it yeah anyway my, my crayons there I want to get this cleaned up here because I have one more thing oh well, actually a couple more things I'll show you these tools this is a drafting square and just like the um, rulers that I use. This has a, a little bit of a beveled edge on it here so that it stays up above the paper so that the ink doesn't splooge underneath it. And then this is um, a combo circle professional template and on the back of it it has these little nubbins that hold the circle, the plastic up above the paper same reason so the ink doesn't run underneath it doesn't squish underneath so uh, that's a, a good tip for anybody and it doesn't matter what kind of ink pen you're using except for maybe ballpoint uh, gel pens might do that so just leave that at that now I'm going to show you this paper one of the nice 
nice thing about this paper is how easy it is to tear off. Those of you who use wax paper a lot may know this trick or foil, but I take this. I'm hoping this will show up really good. That didn't work. I didn't get started right. That's not real straight. I've got more straight. You can do it more straight. You see. That edge there is nice and straight. That edge is not, of course, because I was on camera. So anyway, um, you can use the edge of a counter. Probably what I should have done was taken it and run my fingers on it like that to make a, a crease. And then tried doing it. You can also take a knife and run a knife through it. But you don't have to have a knife out um, for this. But anyhow, the kids will love the tracing paper for other things too. So if you don't do anything, get the kids a, a roll of tracing paper for Christmas next year. <laughs> That'll be the gift that they use for a while, especially if they're artistic. One of the best ways to learn how to draw anything is to trace it. Trace pictures of it. Faces, cars, dogs. It's really a good way to do it. Flowers, those of you ladies who like to do flowers. Guys too, I should say, because guys too like it. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take my box of crayons and I'm going to go see if I can get creative. But thank you so much for joining me today for this kind of crazy session, me sharing my tips. I hope that you learned something. If you have questions, leave them in the comments or send me an email. Uh, and remember, I do have a mailbox now if you... Um, would like to send me anything you're more than welcome to i love getting mail mail is like a present anymore we used to get mail all the time from people now we don't um, it's really a gift so send a card or a letter to a friend you don't have to send it to me but i hope you enjoyed yourself today here with me i was really glad to have you here with me so god bless y'all this is patty the tinkerer's wife signing off